Let's play a game. In this game, all I want you to do is see if you can name some familiar logos. Ready? Here's the first one. Do you know this one? As a hint, it's a classic chocolate brand that you may know of. If you said Toblerone, you would be correct, and let's just say you also get 50 points for that. On to the next one. Think you've got it? Well, if you said LG, then you'd be right again, and of course you'd get another 50 points, but how about this one? A little trickier, but if you said Alfa Romeo, here's another 50 points, bringing your total up to 150. Okay, last one. Okay, I'll admit, that one's a little easier. If you said Amazon, then you're right again, but if you can also say that you've always noticed that the little arrow under the logo points from the letter A to the letter Z, with the literal meaning of the company boasting that they have everything from A to Z, and that the line makes a little smiley with the two A's being the eyes, then you get an additional 25 points. Let's have another look at the other three. Do you see anything about them that stands out to you? From the development of the first eyes with lenses around 521 million years ago upon distant relatives of spiders and shrimps known as trilobites, to our incredible technology these days that enables even the most visually challenged folk to enjoy books and TV and films and Hayden's YouTube videos, our eyes have come a long way. Before the first proper eye that can be dated back to the infamous Cambrian explosion 500 odd million years ago, interestingly, life still is believed to have utilised that big bright thing in the sky to navigate around. Scientists can deduce this fact from earlier eye fossils, but they can also relate our ability to see light and its direction when we close our eyes too. Before we existed with our beautiful high definition devices with lenses and retinas and corneas and irises and optic nerves and the whole intricate network of neurons that communicate with the brain, early life on Earth would have only known which way up was by the low glow of sunlight breaking through the water's surface and onto the creature's eyes below. This most likely would have allowed them to scope out food or mates or perhaps even predators. Although, as we fast forward through the 500 or so million years to the present day, everything began to change rapidly thanks to a little old process known as evolution. Once eyes were developed enough, life graduated pretty quickly, gaining abilities like being capable of seeing colours, sizes, shapes, food, predators, potential mates, and as a result, eat, kill, and most importantly for the longevity of life, reproduce. In fact, due to the vast array of abilities and possibilities that were unlocked with such gains, scientists believe that this may be why vision as a sense was able to increase in abilities so rapidly compared to the other senses that we hold onto so dearly. There's no denying that having eyes gave life new ways of living, and nowadays, not only do eyes give us the ability to learn complicated theories and knowledge from books and whatnot, but they are essential for also completing complicated tasks like gauging one another in a social setting, solving games of chess, crossword, sudoku, driving cars and helicopters, creating and even interpreting art, just to name a few. But more than that, having eyes boosted our ability to focus on what we wanted to, and when you combine our eyes' abilities with the power of the brain, we unlock so much more, like being able to talk, listen, and think count all whilst we watch someone or something. It sounds basic and it's something a lot of us do not think too much about, but how about we put this very point into action? And let's do this by taking a look at this short clip to see how well your brain and eye combo can actually perform. As this clip plays, all I want you to do is just focus on this girl and count how many steps she takes to cross the court. Ready? So if you counted 12 steps, then you'd be correct. Pretty cool, right? You are able to watch the girl walking, plus count her steps, plus listen to the music that I've got synced with this dialogue. How about we step it up a bit with another one? In this next one, again, I want you to focus on counting, but this time there's a little more happening, so try to do your best to stay focused and count how many times the people in white shirts pass the ball around to each other. Again, just the white shirted people. Are you ready? If you counted 15, then you'd be right, but hang on just a minute. I know our brain and eye combo is great for stuff like this, but how much did you miss during these clips? Let's rewind the first one. While watching the girl cross the court, did you also notice that the poor kid in the background was getting smashed with balls? 
Or what about that gorilla that walks through the middle of these people? What's going on here? Our eyes are cool, no doubt, but in all honesty, they're not always that reliable. For one, we're all only capable of seeing things in one tiny segment of the entire light spectrum. Another thing is that our vision is actually upside down and it is up to our brain to flip it the right way. In fact, wearing inverted glasses for a certain period of time has been shown to flip our view for as long as a week. We also have a blind spot due to the location of the optic nerve coming through the back of the eye, but our brain constantly fills in the gap. Not only that, but we can look to activities like meditation, exercise, certain foods, and even recreational drugs that impact upon what we see, opening our awareness to a question regarding if what we see sober is reality. But it doesn't stop there. Our brain and eye combo does some weird stuff too, including refreshing so fast that you don't tend to notice the flicker on your TV or phone or how your LCD screen is in fact riddled with tiny diodes that light up at various intervals, and interpreting things and faces in objects that are definitely not what we are actually seeing. Gestalt's laws of perceptual organization details good examples of this, with one known as the law of closure, demonstrating that shapes can give rise to other shapes, even when they're not there. Like for example this triangle nestled in between these Pac-Men, or this bunch of lines that we can also see as a square. Another law known as the law of pragnance relates to our ability to group images to form complete ones like emoticons, seeing Jesus on burnt bread, or faces hidden in bigger pictures. There are other laws too that come out of just outs, and there are obviously evolutionary reasons for why our brains do this kind of thing, but what about things that are right in front of our eyes? Remember those logos from the start of this video? Did you work out what you might have missed on your first viewing? Let's take another look at them. Did you ever notice the bear in the Toblerone logo? What about the LG symbol being able to be manipulated into a Pac-Man? Or the guy being wrapped up by the snake on the Alfa Romeo logo? What does this all mean? To me, it means a few things, one being how a lack of focus or attention can allow us to miss small details that might or might not be important. Like that little snake on the Alfa Romeo logo, or for example, when your partner changes their hairstyle. Another one being that merely by watching one thing, like the girl crossing the court, we can lose sight of another thing, like the kid getting pummeled. And when you think about it, this is stuff that is happening right in front of our eyes. These are just small examples, but it does show how a lack of focus, or perhaps the wrong focus, can result in you missing things, or even worse, dying. Did you know that more than 1 million people die on the road each year in crashes? On average, that's more than 3,200 people per day. But consider the fact that when you're driving at 100 kilometers per hour, just by taking your attention off the road for a mere three to five seconds, you're looking at easily traveling the distance of a football field. Just think about that for a second. Say your phone goes off and you look down to see who texted you. There is easily a good one second before you register who it is, and then another two seconds while you attempt to unlock it with its passcode and then begin to read it. By that stage, that's well past five to six seconds, and if you happen to reply and then perhaps take a quick Snapchat selfie or scroll the Facebook feed, what are we looking at, 10, 15, 20 seconds or more? And don't just think that this has to do with completing tasks like this whilst looking down, because you're more than aware now of how much you can miss even when the thing is right in front of you. So even if you're still looking at the road while you perform the muscle memory movement of unlocking your phone, your attention is elsewhere and you could quite easily miss something. It gets a little frightening when you think about it like that, especially when you consider what the worst case scenario could be, just because you couldn't wait until you stopped your car to read that message. Our brain and eye combo is great, no doubt, but it's not the be all and end all. When driving your car or reading your book, talking with your friend, writing your essay, whatever the task may be, staying focused is a skill that constantly needs honing in upon. So of course it's hard to constantly stare at the boring road without checking your phone. Of course it's hard to stay focused and read your book or write that report or study for an exam without letting your attention wander. But attempting to, attempting to build your focusing ability will not only provide you with the skill set to complete tasks that you want to, but also improve your ability to notice the smaller details and perhaps even keep you alive. Hey guys, Hayden here. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, during the editing of it, I was kind of coming to the realization that if anyone's seen those videos or solved those logos before, it might actually take away the meaning or the message of this video. So hopefully if you're one of those people, you still got something out of it. And in saying that, let me know below in the comments if the gorilla surprised you or you didn't notice that kid getting pummeled with, uh, with the dodgeballs or perhaps maybe those logos surprised you. 
Also, if you enjoyed the video overall, please consider subscribing. It helps me out and it helps me gauge whether or not to continue making these videos. Other than that, I guess that's it for this week. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.